What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp animation tutorial for you. So in today's, so we're continuing our series on creating animations inside of SketchUp. And so this is another animation that we're gonna create using the extension Animator, which is an extension designed to let you animate movement of objects inside of SketchUp. So as a reminder, all of the example files for all of these videos are gonna be available for free at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. So if you want to download these and follow along, um, see the way that the videos end up, things like that, make sure you check that out at the link in the notes down below or by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, what I want to do is I want to animate a spin of this top inside of Animator. And so to make that more interesting, not only do I want to animate the top spinning, but I also want to animate the camera moving around here. And so we may actually, in a little bit, we may add some, or we can go ahead and do that now. We may go ahead and add some geometry underneath this, um, just so that we have a visual reference outside of our top. So we're going to go to View or we're going to reverse faces. We'll drop this back in perspective mode. And all I'm going to do is just so that we have a little bit of something in here so that we can see that our camera is moving around this so we're not just like flying around in space. I'm just going to add some simple short walls that run up a couple inches. So again, just kind of a visual reference thing so that they show up inside of this. So we'll just use the rotate tool in copy mode. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and group this. So now when we spin around this, you'll be able to actually see that we're spinning around something instead of it's moving in space with the background. But what we wanna do is we wanna use the extension animator to animate this top spinning. So the way that we're gonna do that is first of all, you need to make sure you have animator installed. I will link to animator and Fredo 6's library in the notes down below so that you can download that if you wanna do that. But we're gonna click on this button right here to open up our clip editor. And so what we want to do is we want to animate two things. First of all, we want to animate movement of this object. Second of all, we want to animate movement of our camera. So to start off, what we want to do is let's animate the movement of our object. So we're just going to click on this button right here for insert a unit movement in the timeline. So we'll click on this. We'll click on the button for new movement. And this is where we can add the spinning of our object. So what we want to do is we want to mouse over this top and you can see how this is giving me multiple different selections. So I can either select the little top or the little group that makes up just this handle or what I want is the number one group which is going to be the group that actually makes up the whole top object. So now what we have is we have this selected. You can see how this is selected. Well now what we want to do is in this particular situation we could use either rotation or spin. So let's go ahead and use spin because I used rotation in the one before, so or in the video before. So we're just going to click on this and then what it's going to ask us to do is it's going to ask us to set our rotation axis. So in this situation, our rotation axis is going to be the Z axis. So we're going to click on the Z axis. You can see how this gives us this blue line right here. And we just want to click in here and we want to make sure that we find the center of this group and we just want to click. And so now we've set a base point, or now we've set a center point, now we need to set a base point. So in this situation, it doesn't really matter where you click, you're just gonna click once. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select 360 degrees. So you can click on this angle and type in 360 degrees. And so now, if you click play, you can see how this top is going to spin 360 degrees in two seconds. So you can see how this is spinning right here. And so animating the spin of the top was fairly easy. So we can go ahead and we can click on this button right here to preserve this sequence. Well now if we click play, you're gonna have a two second animation of this top spinning. And so now our top spins no matter where our camera is located, but let's animate a camera movement that flies around this top. And one thing to note about this, by the way, is you can set this to repeat just by selecting this clip, by clicking on it. And then if you look for the option for repeat, you can repeat this multiple times. So you can really kind of set this, if you just want this to spin 
um, for as for whatever amount of time you dictate, you can just keep adding those repeats, and that's just going to sit in here and spin. So you can see how this is continuing to spin as we go. And right now it's a 10 second sequence of this top spinning. And so this isn't a very interesting video right now, so let's add some camera movement to it. So we want to animate our camera flying around this top. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can click on this button right here to insert a camera. So if I click on new camera, you can see how this gives you a number of different options to select different cameras. Um, well, in this case, we want to select the option for capture current view camera. That's basically going to take the current view that we have set. It's going to save it as a view, and then you can click this button right here. So now, no matter where I rotate around, and one thing to point out about this is you probably want this actually to start at zero seconds, not at 10 seconds, because you want this to be at the beginning of the video. Now, no matter where I rotate around, this is going to go back to that camera view that we set. Um, when we start our video. And so now, let's say that at four seconds, we want our camera to have rotated all the way to this point right here. So um, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure our time is set at four seconds and we wanna add a new camera. So we'll click on new camera and we'll rotate our camera around until we get that point that we want. We'll click on capture current view camera. So when we click on that, now we have a second camera view at four seconds. Well now, what this is gonna do, is this is gonna animate a transition between those two different camera views. So between here and here. So at four seconds, you can see how we move to our second camera right here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add one more camera view over here. And we wanna put that in probably at about seven seconds. So we're gonna click on seven seconds click on the camera and click new camera. And then we're just gonna rotate around to right here. Click on the button for capture current view camera and click the checkbox. So now this will animate between the three camera views. So you can see how this moves up, down, and then it'll animate to this other camera view as well. And so the one thing that this doesn't do that I want it to though, is I want it to return to the original camera. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this. And I am actually going to right click on my camera view. So I'm going to click on my camera view and I'm going to click on the button for copy. And then I'm gonna right click on my timeline, I'm gonna click on paste. So what that does is that pastes this camera view at the bottom of our page. So now, if we were to click play, this is gonna animate from this first view to our second view, to our third view, and then back to our original view. So you can set this view so that it animates this transition between these different cameras all the way around here. And so one thing you might notice here is this camera bounces a little bit. So it kind of goes up between these different uh, these different cameras. There are some options in here to set the path that's in here. I've actually found the linear path. Um, you would think would uh, you would think that the linear path would be the best, but actually when you use the linear path, I've found that it actually kind of zooms in a little bit close to your camera. So I found the circular is probably the best, but if you don't like the way this pops up, what you can do is you can set another control camera a little further down. So you can see how now I have a camera that kind of stays on the same level at this point. So if you don't like the bounce, just add another camera view halfway through in order to keep this kind of level. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image and we're gonna export it to a video. And so in the future, if there, we could mess around with some of the different axis orientations and other things like that. So if you guys are ever interested in that, let me know. We could probably add some wobble or something else. But for right now, let's take this and let's export it to a video clip. So to do that, if you remember, we just come up here, click on generate a video for film. We just find the location where we wanna put this and we just call this spinning. And um, I will link to the video down below showing you how to install FFMPEG. Um, that's what allows you to export a video rather than a number of stills. And we're gonna leave our frame rate here and we'll leave our dimensions here. So again, you can always click on test image to test what size that image is gonna look like. And then we're just gonna click on the button for generate video. 
then what that's going to do is that's going to generate our video file by coming in here and so then it'll take these individual frames and it'll stitch them together into a full-on video that you can then play or send out or share or whatever it is you want to do with your video. So we'll go ahead and let this work and then we'll take a look at the result in just a second. All right, so once this is done, you can go through and you can see how it gives you an option to open the folder where your file is located or the play button. I'm gonna click on the play button and we're gonna play the video that we've created. So now if we play this video, you can see how you've got a smooth animation of the top spinning and your camera moving in the other direction. And you could build on top of this with more complex videos in the future. So in addition, you can also export this to a rendering program like V-Ray. So I will talk about that in a future video, but note that that's an option as well. Note that I will be placing these example files at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation if you're interested in following along with the examples. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you like this series? Is there a specific kind of animation you'd like to see? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.